Hello everyone and welcome to Off The Court. See, I know what you're thinking, something's very different. You're right, Tamsin Greenway picked her phone up and answered a call for once. And also, <laughs> we've got a, a third member of the Off The Court party. Difficult times, difficult measures, but there's a joy that is Casey Jacks with us. Hello Casey Jacks, that's actually all, all I'm interested in. You're here for the views. There he is. It is a bit odd this, isn't it? We, we decided Tamsin just to do an Off The Court anyway. Uh, not least because oh. of what have you just <laughs> on that, don't worry. This, that's this, staying this in. is the reality of that's what we're doing. In. That's staying Fine. in. Uh, because we actually had some games in round four, but also some other stuff to, <laughs> to talk about. Casey, are you all right there? There you go. He'll be fine. He loves netball. This is actually, um, uh, well, I hope you've had him training, doing stuff against the wall. Of course. Of course I have. I mean, I'm using this time to really upskill him. Right, right. Uh, we've seen obviously the announcements. What, oh, it's actually six days ago that we last did an off the court at Sky Sports Studios, which is bizarre in itself, it's isn't mad. it? And since then, we had two games that we played on the Saturday. Then the rest of netball was called off from grassroots um, all the way up. I know. I'm going to guess wasps and storm of wish it been called off before Saturday, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about that yet. Uh, let, let's talk about what everyone has, has missed since we were, were last here. And of course, the focus on the coronavirus and how it's affected yeah. sport then. The quick reaction from Netball Super League. I know we saw the first couple of games, but there was this, this fear, wasn't there, that if we didn't get any games away, the impact financially that that would have on Netball and publicity on Netball as well. Yeah, I think it's been... Um... I think look, the reality is it's affecting everything and everyone, isn't it? All sports. And, and it was very easy at the start of all of this sort of uh, dilemma, really, to, to go, oh, how's it affecting us? What's happened? The, the bigger picture is this is a clearly a really serious, um, serious issue at the moment. It's something that needs to be sorted. And of course, we are gutted for netball. We love our sport. Um, but the reality is, and all the messages that are coming out from England Netball, from all the clubs, from all the teams, from all the players, is that player welfare, spectator welfare is far more important than the game. And of course it is. So, yeah, we're gutted. We're gutted where, the, where, where it's at at the moment. But um, the big picture is that this is what's going to happen. So we thought we'd crack on. We thought we'd still talk about Netball because there's plenty to talk about. And I'm sure there's going to be lots of time at home for you guys to uh, to be discussing things and, and talking about different issues so hopefully not just constantly the virus no we've got some special things coming up use the hashtag off the court which everyone has been doing as well this time next week i'm already thinking seven days ahead we're hopefully going to do a three-way uh with the netball show and also my netball nation they're going to get in touch with us too so we might have everyone involved <laughs> yeah if we can get the technology work let's concentrate on today one baby you and me that's enough for all of us loads of questions as as i said though uh, debbie hallis of Manchester Thunder fame got in touch to say if worse comes to the worst and Netball Super League didn't continue should Thunder Netball <laughs> crown champions at Thunder Netball she's obviously kidding it well I don't know she maybe she's not kidding <laughs> I know how competitive you all are um, but she says when Super League resumes obviously the time frame will be significantly shorter what do you think would be a fair format well look the reality is we're off till April the 30th anyway before it even gets reevaluated. I think looking at what's going on we're probably going a lot longer I'm keeping my eye on things in the premiership the football I think we have to stick with professional format my concern would be if the league's not played out properly you have to look at a completely different format and that might be restarting and the, re the reason I say that is teams at the start of the year prepare for playing home and away two fixtures and making mm. scraping sometimes into that top four and then anything goes I think it'd be a real shame to just take um perhaps only you've heard people going well perhaps we'll only play each other once that home advantage is huge well, and we've mean, more than got... three times that we're doing already <laughs> well yeah but you know home advantage is huge look at what their arguments would be well we've lost three away from home but we won against Mavericks at home yeah. Then you've got the issues of players like Latani Wilson missing a game being sent off. Celtic Dragons could argue if she's back for every other game now, they'll be absolutely fine by the end of the season. Loughborough Lightning will go, well, we've had a few injuries, but by the end of the, the season, we'd, we'd be right up there in top four. The reality is you play for that long season. So I think unless we can extend the season out, um, make it fair for the players to get a pre-season in the game. Because look, let's be honest, we can't just tick a box in a few months' time and go, oh, we'll just restart again. The yeah. players aren't training, they're not together. There's so many other bigger issues. I think we have to look at what other sports are doing and we have to make it a fair playing ground. So I want to see the season play out. I'd love to see it in its full format. If it doesn't, we have to be realistic that we might have to change the rules and almost start again. You know, Stars have played Mavericks twice already. So I think there's so many unfair aspects to this that you just 
um, say at this point now, oh, we'll just change the rules around a little bit and just, just play each other once. I think the whole thing will have to be changed unless we can play the full season now. It has brought out the best in so many different clubs, uh, community groups, people getting together. You'll be aware of Netball Australia being putting out their own fitness regimes, which are brilliant. Yeah. And the Netball Players Association here in the UK and abroad as well, just looking after players. And that's at a professional level. But then we've had loads of people getting in touch with us and saying, OK, I, I do a, a weekly netball class, go down and then we go and play maybe once a week as well. We're not getting that contact, that social aspect too. What can we do at home to try and practice a bit better, maybe do stuff on our own? Definitely. Demonstrate look, with Casey. Time... <laughs> Just throw them around a bit. <laughs> um, look, use this time to upskill. It's a perfect opportunity. When do you ever have time to practice your skills, to get your fitness up to scratch? The great thing about netball is it's predominantly... Um, sort of high intensity anaerobic unless you're a crazy center that just runs all the time but look there's there's lots of things and there's players out there at the minute Camilla Buchanan, uh, Laura Malcolm, Sasha Corbin just to name a few that are putting up sessions I'll be doing stuff but predominantly with my daughter because uh, for those who do follow me on social media she started a netball club two weeks ago it's now finished she runs around with her arms up in the air I can't believe she's my daughter um, so I will be out on the yard with her making sure that we're practicing her skills running with arms by her side catching throwing but yeah look a perfect opportunity to upskill um, and also get online you know I constantly love a good netball twitter debate I know that the Wasp girls I see the Mavericks girls they're all still keeping in touch with amazing apps like this uh, because you know they're also at a loss these players are together three or four times a week and yeah. suddenly that is all ended um, so for all of us staying sane like that, that being in touch with your with your teams and your friends is really important Dr. Hilly Hazel, hello Hazel, says, uh, I asked the same of my Netball Nation, what are the Super League teams planning to do to keep the players fit? You kind of cover that. And top tips for ordinary netballers out there for staying fit. She says, I mean, obviously I'm not ordinary uh, in that respect. <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, I think anything anaerobic you can do, work on your plyometrics or your jumping, get your core strong, um, loads of balance work, anything like that would be really helpful for you as a player when you come back. And like I said, you get very few opportunities to, to sort of upskill these things. Get a ball, get on the wall, get your partner out there, get your kids out there, get passing, get catching. Um, yeah, use this opportunity to do all the little things that you don't have time to do at a uh, um, well when you're in when you're in club training and follow loads of netballers and look at what people are putting online because there's so much good stuff out there all right hashtag off the court we will as we go through it as well we're going to look at various positions uh, your position might come up too might stick what, the hardest center. position on the yeah. court oh, sorry the hardest position <laughs> on the court deary me uh, and also we will throughout hopefully as long as we can keep going to um although i'm self-isolating anyway it's my natural mode in life uh, as long as we can keep going we'll keep answering your questions too right is casey jacks ready to cry he, he's he's all over it i've got his dummy ready shall i tell you Good why because we're going to talk about the two games that did happen oh, in okay. round four seven stars 59 wasps netball 54 is where we should start just purely chronologically because that was the first game on on of the saturday of, of round four two out of the five games were played both were on the saturday then um, yeah. what went right for stars should we be positive yeah well look stars i said at the start of the season could easily get a scalp and a scalp they got you know they've got Amal boise in there um they've got an international defensive lineup we've got nia jones now who's a winner they've got um Georgia Rowe, Leona Leota. I mean, they're a good side and I'm not surprised that they, they got better and they're going to keep improving and, and no team at the top should look at Stars with any kind of disrespect and think it's going to be a walk in the park because it really won't be. Mm. Um, and yeah, they played exceptionally well. The, what they did is they kept in the game, unlike what happened previously in round three where Mavericks had kind of put the, to the game to bed really early on. They kept with um, Wasps and they pushed them all the way to the end. And so what happened in that fourth quarter is they got... Three big breaks, and I mean, they were big breaks. There were big umpire calls. I've watched the game, and it was quite interesting. I'm not taking anything away, but they used it. They won that last quarter 20 to 10. Um, and so a really impressive performance from Stars, and something under the, the leadership of Melissa um, Vessel, I'm not actually surprised, happened. We said that she'd bring grit to this team anyway, didn't we? Mm. And that they'd have that fight back. Was it a nine-goal run that they put on? They came back from five goals down in that, in that final quarter? 
It was indeed, and, and, and they've got the quality out there. You know, when you've got someone like Georgia Rowe under the post, I think Paige Reed is really starting to come into her own, led by someone like Leon Liliota. I know Beth and Dyke came on and had a massive impact as well in the middle. Um, they're a good little unit. They're clearly playing for Melissa. They're clearly enjoying their netball, and they are going to get better. You, um, you're concerned so, yeah, about those Wasps' errors in that final quarter? I think the, the issue for me, and, and look, Wasps have beat Mavericks at home. Let's not take anything away. They've, they've actually had a probably, I would say, the toughest run in the competition. I'm not saying that because I'm a Wasp. Um, I, you know, they've played Thunder, they've played Mavericks, they've played Bath, and now they've played Stars. Um, they will get better. If you're looking at the error rate they're making at the minute, they are what I would call a force. We just throw that term around so easily. You know, they are landing on the circle edge and just lobbing a ball straight off the back line. Like that is something that will happen um, with the connection once they start to get um, Iona da um, Christian and Lexi Baker working properly with Rachel Dunn. So it's quite interesting. Um, I think they are in a bit of a confidence lull. They went into that last quarter five goals up. They should have seen that game off. Um, but I think until they can start putting a few runs under their belt, um, they're in a bit of trouble, but I, I think they will come good because there's too many good players in there. Um, but it's amazing what confidence can do for a team. Yeah, Melissa Bessel afterwards said, I made it clear today, it was a win we needed, a win that I wanted. It was neck and neck all the way. I'm super proud of everyone in that last quarter. We won that by 20 goals to 10. I love how you as coaches just emphasise each one of those. It comes back to the debate about whether you get extra points, though, like they do over in Australia. <laughs> what? Well, I don't actually... You're shaking my, your head at me. Win or win the game, win the game. And actually, I don't think, if you're looking at our, our league at the moment with the, so much inconsistency, I don't think it's a good part of the game, especially with the amount of youngsters coming through because I'm, I'm telling you now, I don't think coaches will expose as many youngsters with these goal scores that you're seeing if every single point matters. And actually, look at the games at the minute. I don't think we need it to add any more excitement. You know, Wasp went 10-5 up in that first quarter, 10-5, and they went in, two down. But that is a, a bigger picture. There's, there's too much inconsistency going on across the country on the court at the moment. I'm calling some full-on body-on-body contact then from Casey Jacks. Oh, yeah. That wasn't fair contest. <laughs> None of it fair. Right, on to Surrey Storm 42, Manchester Thunder 60. Defending champions yeah. uh, doing what they do best. Win, 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 yeah. win, win. Win, 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 win. I think they've sorted out the combination. They're looking like they're probably strongest with Laura Malcolm in at wing attack. And I think we'll see that more as the season goes on. They, they need O'Hanlon on that court. They need Amy Carter on that court. So they're going to make that work. Um, and I think then they're strong, they're strong when they make their changes, which is what they did. They were able to bring on Catherine Turner. They were able to bring on Ash Neal. And that was something Greg is going to have to work out. But I think as the season goes on, you'll see more of a set seven um, with players making an impact. Uh, yeah, a quality performance, but not surprised over Storm, especially the way Storm are playing at the moment. They're just mm. not getting enough t attempts on goal. Um, you know, in the last quarter, we scored nine. In the first two, it was only 10 and 10. They went out and recruited Karen Bailey. I thought she was going to be strong enough under the post for them. I think one of the real issues they've had is um, the lack of definition on who their goal attack is. They've swung between Hankin, Yas Hodge England, um, and I don't think they're getting a connection with Yas Parsons there from attack. So a lack of opportunities so, then for Bailey? Huge, hugely. Um, I, I, I think as well her limitation on being on court last year at Mavericks, sitting behind George Fisher, has, has definitely caused their problems this year as well because I don't think um, the games I've seen her so far, she's not been as dominant as I'd expect her to be. Okay, so those are the two games that were done. Dovey was actually player of the match in that. Was that a wow? I know, it's amazing, right? Although she is quality, as you well know, Casey Jacks. So Emma Dovey was player of the match in that one. And then the suspended games, of course, on the, the Monday, the postponed game that's supposed to be on Sky Sports, Love for Lightning against Saracens, Mavericks. We thought at one stage that's going to be behind closed doors and that we yeah. still get to see that. But clearly the right decisions made. Celtic Dragons, Sirens and Team Bath london pulse rounding off round four so with the break we would then go into round 12. so we were talking about emma dovey she then put up this message after that to the thunder family at this difficult time we're with you as well talking about can't be on court for the next few weeks but we'll make sure we keep in touch and don't forget you're always part of the thunder family some of those other messages and things that we've seen this week hashtag off the court northern titans men's netball club got in touch with us as well say huge thanks they staged the first double header the first men v men netball match which was brilliant um so they got great results so i think they beat un 52 32 thanks for getting in touch 
We saw rhinos, these rhinos with their boys club that Casey Jacks might be part of in the future, getting some young uh, boys talent coming through. But, but seeing this, this first men's netball game in the UK, historic moment, Tamsin. Yeah, it is. And we know there's a place for men's netball. Look, I, I got asked, I think got asked a question last week whether I think it should be combined. No, I don't, but I definitely think a, there's a place for, for it. It's a growing sport. We want boys playing from an early age. We want men supporting it. We want men playing as well. Um, and, you know, over the years, we've had some cracking matchups against some of the men's teams that have existed. So um, I'm a huge fan of them. I, I know a lot of the guys. Um, I know Knights Netball, coached by Talisa Haynes, are doing some great things. So, yeah, the more the merrier and the more that they can organise this as well and get this going for themselves, I think is, is brilliant for our sport and our brand. Thank you then to Northern Titans Men's Netball Club. Well done then. Uh, this was funny from Mr Gary Burgess. Funny, not funny. Um, <laughs> Mr Umpire getting in, in touch just to talk all about social distancing. He put this photo up of himself with the whistle. It's not the golden one that we're used to seeing with him though, saying just make sure you're not obstructing uh, netballers out there as well. So he's got involved in the Twitter chat. This from Siggy Berger. Not entirely sure what she meant, London Pulse's finest. You may as well go ahead and pronounce the L in salmon. Nothing matters anymore. Would you like to say the L in salmon in terms of? Salmon. Salmon. Thank you, Ziggy. Uh, this from, from up your end as well, your, your role now with Scotland. In light of school closures, Lindsay Gallagher will be on hand to answer any questions with regards to remote education. So not only yeah. does she play a good game, she talks a good game too. Well, I think, yeah, we have to remember that, don't we? I saw Caroline O'Hanlon uh, tweeting stuff from her medical background and now obviously Lindsay Gallagher doing this and you'll see a lot more from the netballers because so many of them have dual roles, as we know. I think this is a brilliant um, plan from, from Sirens and great that Lindsay wants to get involved. Um, you know, I am one of the many parents, not only with Casey Jacks, I'll get Jamie later and, and that'll be uh, homeschooling for however mental time however amount of time so I'm sure I'll be on the phone to Lindsay as well at some point going ah help what else can I do um I, I already said I'm great at PE lessons I'm sorted for that but the maths English science might need a bit of um touching up yeah don't don't come to me uh here is Camilla Buchanan who we mentioned earlier uh, with her yeah. isolation idea so she's been telling you how to do and showing you how to do as well check out Camilla and a lot of the players as well uh, and this is fun for all the family I have no idea do you know who this is <laughs> No, I really don't. I'm looking at that going, who? But that well, was one hell of an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. It's not me, clearly, because uh, two things wrong with that. I'd never be caught dead in that. And also, I don't play for seven stars. I went on for seven stars as well. And all of those that are trying to engage through social media. Right, that's almost it from us. But we did have uh, quite a few questions in for you. Are you ready for yeah. the question? Go on, hit me. All right, well, uh, possibly in just a minute. Use the hashtag off the court to get in touch. Lots asking you for your questions on how to keep fit. We've spoken about that. But this from Sarah, she says, can I ask a real beginner question? As yep. a wing defence, how do I effectively defend on the edge of the D? She says, uh, I feel ineffectual. Stay well. <laughs> um, yeah, well, you're definitely going to have to get close. There's no social distancing on the edge of the circle. Biggest thing is about your angle and how you can slide behind to actually have a challenge. So you've got to decide whether you're trying to put pressure on the ball or whether you're actually trying to win it, which is very difficult. Practicing without an attacker there, running the edge of the circle, because it's not a, it's a strange angle, it's a curve. So you see so many players go for the ball thinking they've got it and obviously being about a metre offside, that was always my favourite from a wing defence. I'd be like, look at your feet, love. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really important you practice without. Again, a great opportunity to upskill. Choose a bit of a curve, mark it down on, on your lawn or your drive or wherever, um, and just sort of run those patterns. It's so important that you drill some of these skills. I'm just laughing because Casey Jacks was immediately quiet the minute you put on your coach's voice. Uh, Chloe, oh, course, thank you, Chloe. You know. Chloe says, got a couple of questions. Which of the new imports has impressed you most so far this season? And also interested to hear what you think of Wasps' two losses. Is it too early to say they are no longer the cert they used to be? Well, you can see what Casey Jack thinks of that. Um, two, in, the imports so far, the Jamaicans have kind of really hit home for me. I think Adine Thomas is coming into our own. Um, I actually saw on social the other day that someone was calling me a, a sunshine girl. But look, I think they really suit our league. They bring something completely different. Uh, Latanya Wilson has been amazing. Oh, mate. Um, would, would he, does he need a bedtime story from me? <laughs> that was going on here. <laughs> Casey Jack, we're nearly done. Look. Hey, 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 okay, we're jiggling, we're talking, <laughs> Chloe, I tell you what, 
Um, and a wasp top four, I think the league plays out properly. They are still well and truly in there. Remember, they beat Mavericks in round two. I wouldn't write them off just yet. Chloe, thank you for your question. Thank you to everyone that's got in touch. Uh, we will get Gary Burgess on. We've got a special next week, hopefully, fingers crossed, if this goes away. And the return of Casey Jacks. This time oh, next week, we'll be not. winding Sorry, him. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you are, as always, a hero. Tams in Greenway, thank you very much. Thank you thank for, you for you. downloading, watching, streaming, however you've caught up with Off the Court, too. We'll leave the last word to Casey Jacks and to Tams. And bye for now. Take care, everyone. Bye. Sky Sports, feel it all.